It's time for Thriller Thursdays here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. And now, episode 195. The chase is on. Georgia, what's our time to gravity assist? We are in optimum orbit for gravity assist to depart Cali. Main thrusters are online. Full throttle in three, two, one. Maintain present holding for Boulder Bar Beacon acquisition. Reactor core temp is nominal. Thrust attempts are also nominal. V1. Navigation? Navigation is go. Engineering? Engineering is go. Committed to gravitational escape. All systems are go. V2 and we're off. We are free from Cali's gravitational field. Booster shutdown in three, two, one. Resume normal navigation, all ahead full. All ahead full. First Boulder Bar navigation beacon is online at 130.4. 10 degrees right for course intercept. 10 right. Permission to return topside. I want to put eyes out there in case she doubles back on us. A good idea. We'll remain at zero G. We're on course now. We could just fly the needle. Georgia, are you able to detect any communication signals past the portal? Negative. There is still no signal from the other side. Now this presents us with a very big problem. Baldibar has no idea that the Cambria is approaching. If it is at all. I, for one, believe she has no other option. She's not going to find any sympathy for rage on Cali. The Baldibar system's her only hope. But if she is headed to Baldibar, then I agree. It's a big problem. By the time they realize the portal has been breached, she could be long gone. As soon as we clear the portal, make contact with the BSS for a status report. We need to know if anything came through as soon as possible. I suggest everyone get settled in. It's going to be a while before we reach the portal. Good morning. Did you even go home last night? Oh, briefly. I got a little sleep. I'm waiting on a call from Agent Doug. With this Jameson development, he might think it's best to come back here. I'm sure that's what we'll discuss. Has the director been by? No, he went straight to a meeting this morning. I'm not sold on Jameson being the mole, so I'll continue going through these files. I think that's a very good idea. Agent Simon. Tony, I got your message about Jameson. This is most disturbing. Have you been able to make any contact with him? No, we've set up alerts, but nothing yet. I'm not 100% convinced that he is the leak. £50,000 does make a good argument, though. It doesn't make any sense. He is only a junior analyst. He's been with the company for only a few months. There is no way he could be involved with the disappearance of those going back to 2015. Even with the most recent one, he was with me in Texas. That much money and a one-way airline ticket say a lot. Perhaps all he did was provide a name or location that led others to the agent we were grooming. I agree. That's a lot of money. But he hasn't touched it and the airline ticket has never been used. Maybe he got cold feet and left everything behind. It just doesn't sound like him. I think you need to stay in Kiev and pursue what leads you have. If Jameson is involved, he was only a small part of this. I agree. I think once you've exhausted all of our potential leads and have cleared everyone on my list, 
You and Agent Hawk need to come to Kiev. We can certainly do that. We will most likely finish this today. I'll talk to the director and see about arranging travel. See you in a few days. Arranging travel? Yes, once we've complete these screenings, you and I will be going to Ukraine. Isn't that considered a war zone? So far, it's been relatively safe for diplomatic travel. Yeah, so far. That sounds important. It is. I set up an alert on his credit card. His credit card? I thought he left it in his flat. Apparently, this is a different one. His name has been flagged with all the banks. If it pops up, we get an alert. I don't suppose there are many Gabriel Jamesons in London. It's worth looking into. Where was it used? Antwerp. Belgium? That means he could have taken a boat from here. He could avoid detection that way. Why Antwerp? It's a port city. I think it's just the first leg of a journey to... Well, I don't know where to. Kate, this doesn't bode well for young Jameson. But, like everything else, this doesn't make sense. Jameson may just be a junior analyst, but he knows using a credit card's a no-no if you're on the run. Yes, that bothers me too. He knows better than to do that. You think he wants us to follow him? That just doesn't make any sense. Nothing about this whole thing does. There is a disturbing alternative reason. Someone else is using it. If so, they used it for a rail ticket to Berlin. Mm. Yes, that does make sense. Take a look at this map of Central Europe. Hold on, let me pull it up. Okay, there's Antwerp and there's Berlin. Continue straight across to the next country. Poland? Do you think he's headed to Warsaw? Yeah. Draw a straight line. Antwerp is here, then Berlin, then Warsaw. Ah, I see. It's almost a straight line that ends up in Kiev. So if this next stop is Warsaw, you can be assured that's where he's headed. Are we going after him now? Uh, I, I think that would be a waste of time. For one thing... We could be chasing someone else. It might be someone who stole his card. We just don't know. Agent Doug is already expecting us in a couple of days. What's our plan moving forward? I'll call Dale back and alert him of the possibility that Jameson might be headed his way. I know this doesn't sound positive, but I hope it's him. Because if it's not, then we may have lost our junior analyst. Yes. Ah, Captain Tam, please come in. How are the upgrades to your ship coming along? Slow but steady. Refitting a ship like yours is no easy undertaking. I understand, and I am trying to be patient. So why did you ask to see me? I wanted to make sure you knew what was going on with the portal communication station. I understand it was damaged when that old rage fighter was trying to shoot us down, which means there's no word on how the Mercury is doing. That is correct. However, there is another reason and I think I hear him coming now. Him? Who's him? One of the best bat commanders we've ever had. Hey, you must be talking to me. Major Jocko, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, and trust me, I can't begin to tell you how good it is. Major, this is Captain Tam Fielder of the Freighter Ulysses. Captain Fielder, pleasure to meet you. Major. So, to what do I owe this honor? Captain Tam has been aboard the Mercury in pursuit of our old friend, Wi-Fi. That guy's still around? I thought some would have punched his ticket by now. While well, my ship's being worked on, my pilot and I have teamed up with a bounty hunter named Jafra. We were in pursuit of a Dr. D. He had joined forces with Wi-Fi's, well, I don't know what you would call her. I, I guess she has a reputation. Well, this Dr. D wanted to operate on Wi-Fi and take over his biometric enhanced brain. Bella played along so she could free him from a lunar colony prison. That sounds like her. Of course she turned on the doctor and left him high and dry and stole another pilot ship. We brought the doctor and his nurse back here for the bounty. As part of her bounty, we agreed to upgrade Captain Tam's ship. Wait, was the Mercury the ship that was being chased by that old fighter? Yes, and they destroyed the comm station at the portal. Let me ask you, is Roger still the captain? No, his first mate is now the captain. Did his pilot Tekka leave with him? She left also. 
Right now, my pilot is flying for him. How about Barnes? Barnes was, but he has returned home. Yes, Jim was needed back on Earth. I expected that. The case I just finished in Queens was his case. I got to work with Agent Nelson and Kate, along with her sister Kelly. After the Mercury returned here, he stayed back to incarcerate Hank and Louie, along with the others. As soon as that was completed, he returned home. That's funny. We probably passed each other in deep space. You have my curiosity, Pete. Why the introduction? The Major has been reassigned to a Bat Squadron. I'm sending him and his team to the portal. They will pass through and attempt to make contact with the Mercury, then return to this side and report back to me. I was hoping you would join his team. Where do I sign up? You just did. Report to Base 17 in three standard hours and we'll get Quartermaster to issue the equipment you'll need. Welcome to the team. Good morning. Hey, good morning. I brought you a little something. I think this is how you take it. You brought me coffee? When I make a fresh pot every morning? Oh, yeah, but I thought I'd treat you today. Oh, nice try. Ooh, cappuccino. Well, okay, you're forgiven. So, what's the occasion? Jim and called, and it's official. We're going after Colonel Korski. Well, this is a reason to celebrate. This is a real case. I mean, the others were real. But this is one with investigations, questioning, background checks. It's got it all. Yeah, and quite honestly, it'll take me back to the days on the force. It was a bonus to have Hernandez stop by. I'm hoping I can use some of the precinct's assets on this. That'll be great. I still have good connections with my old firm. I might be able to get help there if we ever need it. So, what's our first step? We'll really need to wait for Garrett to get to D.C., but we can familiarize ourselves with the case. Can you do a search of local papers and see if there's any mention of the accident? I'll check police records and see if there are any local Leos involved. I have a feeling this was strictly an on-post investigation. On-post? Is that like on base? Oh, yeah, that's right. Horace was Air Force. Yeah, it's the same thing. It would most likely be an in-house investigation. I've been out too long to call in any favors. Well, since it involves civilians, I think we can get copies of the report, especially since Korsky has now been charged. And that, Kelly Merritt, is why I hired you. Oh, Oh, I see. So it wasn't for my coffee-making skills. Uh, I plead the fifth. If we're going to dig into this investigation, we're going to need to interview Scarlett. I talked to her a little when we were awaiting transport of the prisoners in Houston, but we really didn't go into the details of the accident. I'm sure Detective Garrett has that under control. When he gets to D.C., we'll have a chance to go over that. So when you meet with him, do you want me to stay back here in the office? No. I want you in on this from the get-go. Besides, that's why we have an answering machine. Oh, and that's why I agreed to work for you. And here I thought it was my charm and personality. Right. You were my sister's partner, remember? I think that's something I would remember. By the way, any word from her? Not much. She's still working on that in-house problem at MI6. Spy stuff. That's right up her alley. She's in hog heaven. I'm sure they'll keep each other straight. Oh, I just can't seem to find my glasses. Uh, Tony? Yeah? They're pushed up on your head? <laughs> oh dear, so they are. It's been another long day with little to show for it. A long day with little advancement and the fact that the junior agent you're mentoring is missing and presumed guilty of espionage. I can see why you might be a little distracted. Yes? Well, I need to stay focused. Anything yet on the credit card? Using the card in a foreign country, you need to have a PIN number. That would rule out someone finding it or stealing it. Leaving us with two possible options. Either he's on the run, or someone took his credit card and made him give up his PIN number. If someone took his card and PIN number, then where is Jameson? Kidnapped? That's been in the back of my mind, too. I just don't see the reason why someone would put money into his account and then kidnap him. Why? What purpose would it serve? Usually, if someone's kidnapped, there's a ransom demand. 
you don't kidnap a person and then put 50,000 pounds in their bank account. That's backwards. That's precisely my point. There's got to be a logical explanation to all this. Got another hit on his credit card. There's no way he could have reached Berlin already. It was used to purchase a beverage for eight euros. Eight euros? For that much, he must have had an alcoholic beverage, which is again odd. Jameson is TT. Again, it points to the fact that it isn't him. I think it's a diversion. A diversion. So again, we're looking at two possibilities. Either he's leading us away from him, or someone else is creating a diversion. I agree. It's like they're leaving a trail of breadcrumbs for us to follow. The clues are just too obvious. I think having Agent Doug pick this trail up is the best solution. This looks too much like baiting to me. We need to keep searching in the immediate area. We have the assistance of Interpol and facial recognition everywhere. My guess is that he is still here in London. Then he's either in hiding or being held captive. So, Joe Mac, did you get bored up there in the cupola? Stare into complete darkness for a few hours and you'll have your answer. Kind of like a night drinking in Alice Springs. You got that right. But at least you can get a drink out there. Alice Springs? Where's that? Smack dab in the middle of nowhere. Uh, at any rate, there's nothing to see. I think maybe you should return the mercury to 1G. I've done enough floating for a while. Captain Nate. Yeah, Gabby, what's up? Joe Mac is out of the cupola. I think he's ready to start his sleep cycle. I suggest we resume gravitational rotation. All right, stand by. Attention, all hands. Secure yourselves and prepare to resume 1G. Joe Mac, Marco, and I are secure. Copy that. The bridge is also secured. Go ahead, Georgia. Initiating gravitational rotation. Round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Seriously, Joe Mac? This is the part I'm not real crazy about. That area between gravity and weightlessness. It's like being on a carnival ride after eating too much. Now, if you're going to lose your lunch... Hold off until we reach 1G. And, uh, there's a bag on the side pocket of that chair. Don't worry. I'll be all right. I hope so, because I'm not cleaning anything up. Attention, all hands. We have reached 1G. You are free to move about the cabin. Hey, that's my line. I am learning. Oh, you better watch out, Cap. She's picking up your bad habits. (laughs) If she starts quoting old movies, let me know. Joffrey would like to talk things over, so all hands to the bridge. Aye, Captain. All right, you two. Report to the principal's office. Been a while since you heard that one, eh, Skipper? <laughs> yeah. Takes me back to the good old days. I bet you had a chair in there with your name engraved on it. Yeah. How'd you know? Just a wild guess. <laughs> All right, I brought the troublemakers to see the principal. The principal what? Don't mind her, just one of her earth jokes. So, what's up, Jeffra? Uh, we're close to a sleep cycle away from the Baldibar portal. I want everyone ready an hour before the cycle ends. We have no idea what's on the other side waiting for us. We're anticipating that the IDF will be in the vicinity of the portal affecting repairs. Hopefully if they are, we can make contact with them to see if they saw the Canberra. Well, whether they did or not, we can check in with the BSS and see if they monitored any ship passing through. We don't even know how much of a head start she's got on us. If no one saw her, she could be anywhere in the solar system. It's pretty difficult to navigate that system without being tracked, even without a transponder. I think we've got a pretty good chance of finding out which direction she took, if she's there at all. She's right about that. We are assuming she made a run for the portal. Well, that's a pretty good assumption there, Marco. A surface landing on Cali would have been detected. This is the only place she could have gone. I agree with Joe Mac. Any other direction than she's looking at what you would refer to as a week of travel before reaching the next portal. This is the only logical course of action she could have taken. We all need to get some rest. Georgia, keep us on course and notify me if there's any issue. 
Set everyone's wake up to one standard hour before the end of this sleep cycle. Affirmative, Captain Nate. Let's get some sleep while we can. Right on time. Got everything? Yep. Quartermaster issued me what I needed and sent me on my way. Is that your bat? Roger that. One each battle armored troop transport model A2 ready to go. All right, let's get this show on the road. Excellent. So what were your final marching orders? You must have prior service. Biodefense. Well, let's just hope we don't need your expertise. We've been tasked to position ourselves on the far side of the portal and attempt to make contact with Mercury. Our first stop will be the BSS. That's good. I'd like to see the crew again. Speaking of crew, how many do you have? I'll have a co-pilot and a gunner. You'll be in the troop transport compartment until we make contact. We don't have gravitational capabilities, so you have to remain strapped in. Once we get through the portal, we'll remain stationary, and you can move up with us. Understand. Just so you know, as part of my familiarization training, I qualified on bat laser or cannon just in case you need an extra gunner. I'll keep that in mind. Let's get you settled in. I'm good to go. I can hook up my comms and seatbelt. Outstanding. Next stop, the BSS. Okay, that's the last one. We've been through all the names Agent Doug gave us. I haven't found any red flags. (sighs) Nor have I. Unfortunately, that leaves us with only one suspect. You really think Jameson's capable of something like this? Jameson was assigned to me just prior to Houston. That's really not enough time to get to know someone. But in what little time I spent with him, I can honestly say I have no reason to suspect him. You never really know someone, Agent Simon. That's true. But I'm just not convinced that he's mixed up in this. Think about it. He has been with me since being assigned to the unit. How could he possibly gather intelligence that would lead to our prospective informant's disappearance? As far as I know, he's never been in Ukraine or Russia. How do you explain the money and the one-way airline ticket? Then let me ask you, why leave his mobile behind and not withdraw any of the money? His phone can be traced, and there wasn't enough time to make a withdrawal. So... You think he could possibly be our mole? No. Like you, there are too many reasons why he can't be. There's something else going on here. I see you two are still at it. Any progress? We've been through Agent Doug's list and nothing stands out. We've pretty much exhausted anyone associated with this office. With the exception of young Jameson. Yes, I'm afraid so. But I must tell you, sir... I'm not in the least bit convinced that he's involved. Even though there was a large sum of money deposited and an unused airline ticket, he left all of that behind. Also, he knows better than to use credit cards. That's like leaving a breadcrumb trail for us to follow. My intuition comes to the same conclusion. We don't even know for sure if he even left the country. He could very well still be in London. He's not in London. Why do you say that? We just received an alert from Interpol. A facial recognition camera just spotted him in Berlin. What is Jameson doing in Berlin? Is he really on the run? Will the bat be able to intercept the camera? And where will Colonel Korsky's investigation lead Barnes? Find out the answers to these questions and more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles Project Intercept.